when I was reading the uh, Bhagavad Gita, which is a, it's a Sanskrit book that was um, translated, and you know the specific version that I read was um, from a philosopher named Radhakrishna, and in a lot of the notes in the Bhagavad Gita, he would talk about you know the psychological significance of what was going on between the characters of Arjuna and Krishna, which is you know akin to Jesus and disciple, I suppose, or, or God and the Spirit, and there was a part in it. Uh, where he wrote about Dharma. And I'd heard this word Dharma before, but I didn't really know what it meant. And he kept talking about this idea of meaningful work where the fruit of the labor is found in the labor itself. And I never really understood what that meant. And, you know, I read it and I, I loved it and I moved on, you know, and then I started getting into entrepreneurship and having a listen to, you know, what these incredible entrepreneurs would talk about in terms of, what it would be like and what you would do if you were financially independent or you know how would you live your life if 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 there was no such thing as money or if you had all the time in the world and i, I really started to you know note the similarity between what radhakrishna was writing about in the 20th century and what the entrepreneurs are, all, are telling us all today this idea that if you didn't have to do anything, what would you do? And the reason why this journal is called Dharma is because this is what I want you to have a think about. What would you do, literally, if you didn't have to do anything? What makes the time fly like minutes? You know, Carl Jung said that, um, you know, whatever makes the time fly like seconds, or whatever you did as a child that made the time fly like seconds, therein lies the, uh, the fruit of your, of your worldly experience. I kind of butchered that last little bit, but it's the same idea, you know, what would you do if you had all the time in the world? And what's so cool about the fact that you have written a perfect day is that when we want to bring that into being, we want to have a think about how much of it we can already live. You know, I've done this work to, to lots of clients now, and when they write their perfect day, they very quickly see how much of it, normally it's more than 80%, that they can actually do either today or tomorrow. You know, most of us, we wanna feel like our life has purpose and structure. So we need to give ourselves some kind of routine. You know, we need to allocate time throughout the day, whether it's in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, most people have a morning routine, but allocate some kind of time that allows us to get the things done that we want. You know, for some of us, it's, it's training early in the morning, you know, having cold shower, preparing our meals, meditation, getting our writing in, doing our journal work, you know, doing, doing our coursework as an example. But what makes you fulfilled? Those are the kind of tasks that we want to put in place. So you'll find in this journal that you'll be writing two columns. You know, some of it is obviously predicated on the Dharma idea, but this idea of two columns. So what you can do now and what you can't do yet within relation to your perfect day. So if your perfect day, for example, was you wake up at, at 7 a.m. and you, you kiss your spouse, you give her or him a big hug, and then you go off to the gym, okay? Well, could you do that right now? You know, the question is, do you have a spouse? If you do, can you go to the gym? If you don't have a spouse, put that in the can't do yet column because everything in life is practically attainable. We just need to specify our targets. So for example, if we are talking about a spouse, who is your perfect partner? What does he or she look like? What do they do? Where do they go to exercise? What do they do on a night out? You know, all of these things that we can, if we specify our aims, we can attain this sort of stuff. This isn't intangible. This is very, very practical work. I really want you to remember that. When you're thinking about your can do now, can't do yet, Colin, I believe that most of your can do now will probably end up um, with the structure stuff, you know, the, the, the things that we need to take responsibility for. You know, it's it's not up to anyone else as to whether or not we, we exercise, we do our writing, we do our meditation, we do the work that we need to do. If we put that in and we allocate it enough time to do it, it will fulfill us. The rest of the perfect day, of the perfect day, maybe you don't have a spouse, but you'd like one. Maybe you don't have a business yet, but you'd like to sell your first, I don't know, shoe for $120 or something. All of that goes into the can't do yet column. And then from that, we start to have a look at what we need to do day in, day out, so as to bring all that into being. So that the can do now and the can't do yet just becomes can do now, which means then by definition that you are living your perfect day. 
That's what's so cool about this stuff. It's very tangible, it's very practical, and it's on you. And the best thing about life is that when everything is your responsibility, it means that you can change it. So if no one else's fault, and it is up to you to get this stuff happening, you're off to the races. So enjoy the journal.